Hi, this is Jean Shamley Thomas, and welcome to Passing the Torch. Uh, we've been away for a while. I'm glad that you're here. Um, I really felt impressed of the Lord to get going again, and particularly with this, uh, what He's put on my heart today, I believe it's because it's on His heart. So I want to say a quick prayer, and we will get into what I believe the Lord has really put so strong on my heart, um, a special message for today, okay? Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus, and Lord, we know you by your Holy Spirit. Speak to us through your word, Lord, and through the gifts of the Spirit, and Father, we thank you that these things are in operation today. We thank you for your word, that your word will speak to us, and that what's on your heart will get across to our heart. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, this is an unusual one. I usually do teaching videos, but this is going to be more of a, what I would say, prophetic video because the Lord has put on my heart something that is, I believe, weighing very heavily on His heart. Um, and just a little bit about me. One of the things that God, you know, has called me to do other than, you know, be a, just like a Sunday school teacher, a Bible teacher, um, He's always asked me to say things, and I'll just read it because I love the words of this song by Jars of Clay. It says, speak and say the words that no one else will ever say. Love, love like the world we know is over in a day. And the Lord gave me those words uh, more than a decade ago, and little did I know I would be making videos, and little did I know... <laughs> <laughs> that some of my, I consider myself to be shy, just my, my innate personality. I'm shy, I'm reserved, I'm uh, I like a lot of alone time. But when the Lord taps you on the shoulder and says, I need you to do something, I need you to say something, you don't tell your Lord no. <laughs> that would be what an oxymoron, Lord and no don't go together. If he's really your Lord, you don't tell him no. You don't tell him no. So what I want to bring to you today is a special message, and I'm going to actually do two parts. The first part, I really want to speak to people that have been in ministry before. Now, I graduated from Bible school in 1986, and uh, I went to school with thousands of people, and I'm still in touch with a lot of them. And I can't tell you how many of them are no longer in ministry. And that's okay not to be like in the vocation of ministry or like full-time pastoring or, or anything like that. I'm not talking about that. But I came across these words that were weigh, weighing so heavily on my heart uh, for me as well. Okay, because once upon a time I, I was in pastoral ministry as well. And then when I left, I went into more evangelistic and then uh, moved to a different area which was really, really hard with uh, religious spirits and Pharisee spirits and just things that I'd never experienced before. And we got somewhat burnt out, you know, on the whole church thing. But, you know, God, and, you know, God will meet you where you're at. So the Lord began to open doors for, like, me personally to minister online. For me, per you know, the videos, uh, I mean, for five years, God had me a, an open forum of writing uh, really inspirational poetry about God, um, evangelistic poetry, and it went all over the world. It was read by thousands. And uh, then a few years ago, uh, the whole website crashed and all of that went away. So the Lord then moved me into the videos. But the bottom line is, this is something that the Lord had told me. Even though I'm not you know, in the position or in the ministry like I was at one time, I'm still not released from that calling. And I have this, I don't think you can read it, it's backwards, but I have this up on my wall and something the Lord said to me, he said, feed my sheep and keep doing it until I tell you otherwise. Feed my sheep, never quit, keep your cup filled with me, that my child is your priority and your calling. And I'm not the only one, like I said, I know so many people that were in ministry that are now not in ministry. And that's okay not to be in full-time ministry. But you need to understand that once you're gifted and called to feed my sheep, Jesus says, 
you don't stop. Even if, now it's interesting because I went from pastoring, you know, co-pastoring a church and helping pioneer churches. I mean, I was all involved in that. And then did evangelistic stuff, move this, kind of got burnt. And then the Lord moved me back into, and you have to understand, you've got to be willing to hum be humble. you got to be willing to humble yourself. I went back for a year and taught a youth group at a Baptist church because that's where the Holy Spirit led me. And it's interesting because I'm Pentecostal, but I had no problem uh, honoring their belief system, but teaching those kids everything I possibly could about Jesus Christ, about the supernatural of God, about uh, how to be born again and how to be encountered, you know. And I didn't step out uh, of line with what the pastor would have wanted. But man, there's so much that you can do where you're at. So um, I went back and did that for a year. And God began to, you know, open different doors and then led me into doing these videos. And this is what I want to read you that the Lord brought to me this morning. If you've been in ministry, if you have done, you know, any pastoral ministry, anything you would consider feeding my sheep, even if you were a Sunday school teacher or teacher of children and you've backed off from that. And God knows, I mean, we get warfare. We get knocked down. It, it is not easy. I am not saying it is, and I'm not speaking any of this from condemnation, but I'm coming to you saying the Lord Jesus Christ is calling you back, all right? It's time to call up the reserves. All right, this world is going to hell in a handbasket, all right? This millennial generation and those underneath them and those above, I mean, it is a wicked, wicked world, and God needs our mouth. Now, I don't care if you've lived a perfect life. I mean, look at David. God continued to use David. Just get up and get going again. Uh, I'm not asking, you know, I'm not talking about, um, you know, whether you feel like you deserve to do this or not. A lot of times ministers get out of ministry, and they do. The enemy comes with that kind of condemnation where you're not worthy to do this. But the Bible said, you know, once you're called, always called. Okay, he doesn't uh, relent uh, of our callings, and, and that's scripture, okay? But what I want to read you, I hope will wake you up. I hope it will shock you a little bit because it, it did me. This says the faithful servant and the evil servant. It says, who then is a faithful and wise servant? See, so many of us don't know that God really means what he says. And really, when we read the Word of God, we should tremble. And I'm going to talk a little bit about the fear of the Lord and why. Why should we tremble? Because no matter what we believe, no matter if we put our head in the sand, no matter if we choose not to think about it, we are going to have to face the consequences of what His Word said and did we listen or not listen, did we do it or not do it. Okay? It doesn't matter, you know, your reasons. It doesn't matter... Um, a lot of things, but let me read this to you because it's so important. Who then is a faithful and wise servant whom his master made ruler over his household to give them food in due season? Blessed is that servant whom his master, when he comes, will find so doing. That's what we want to be found doing what we're called to do in one form or another. Okay, so I want you to get off that you have to go back and stand behind a pulpit anymore. But if you've ever fed the sheep of God and that's your calling, God will open maybe even a creative way for you to continue to do that. Continue to disciple people. Continue to feed people the word of God. There is still hope for you yet, okay? I, I know how hard it is. And I know how disheartening it is. And I know what it's like when you get run out of ministry, uh, even by people in leadership. I mean, we get broken hearted and crushed. And in many ways, that's really the place that's best. That's when we're pliable before God. But only if we don't become bitter and we continue to humble ourselves before God and seek Him. All right? It says, Blessed is that servant whom his master, when he comes, will find so doing. Assuredly, I say to you that he will make him ruler over all his goods. That's not a small promise from God. If you're called to feed the sheep, 
You're called to be a minister, a servant of God, or whatever it is you're called to do. And he finds you doing it. There's reward. But especially for those that are called to feed the sheep, to disciple, to preach the word of God, to pastor, all right? Whether that be in a church or in a home group or online or, or whatever it is God leads you to do, okay? It's no small matter if you've been called to feed the sheep of God. Assuredly, I say to you that he will make him ruler over all his goods. But, there's a big but, and sometimes we don't like to... Uh, there was such a positive movement that nobody would ever go beyond the positive into the butts. But if that evil servant says in his heart, my master is delaying his coming and begins to beat his fellow servants and to eat, and that means be critical, okay? Beat his fellow servants and to eat and drink with the drunkards. The master of that servant will come on a day when he is not looking for him and at an hour that he is not aware of and will cut him in two and appoint him as portion with the hypocrites there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth i think we don't take the lord's word seriously i mean he really means that and what burdens my heart is how many people i know that have done that they've left ministry and they now criticize others in ministry and they they almost across the board they they've gone back to drinking again and living like the world again drinking and smoking and you know i mean i know ministers that have gone back to all kinds of stuff that used to be in ministry okay now jesus christ is watching that he knows why you you got bitter and burdened and why you did that but you need to snap out of it because our days are numbered if you are not watching what's going on in the world and you've got your head in the sands we've got earthquakes in various places we are on the verge of world war three we've got volcanoes going off unprecedented unprecedented i encourage you to look up dutch sense d-u-t-c-h-s-i-n-s-c.com look up his site he does earthquake uh, forecast and he shows you how many earthquakes happen in a day you can find out just look up usgs and see if it doesn't like make you shudder but there's so much going on, and we are getting so much closer to everything described of in Matthew 24. We are really getting close to the beginning of those seven year, uh, the, the period, okay? And we need to not be asleep, okay? Because these words are fearful. He will cut them in two and appoint them their portion with the hypocrites. Let that sink in for a minute, where there'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth. If you're a minister and you used to feed the sheep and you quit doing it and you have backslid into a place where you are acting like the world, you're eating and drinking like the world, you know, you've, you've gone back into a worldly lifestyle. Oh, you may still go to church on Sunday, but you're not, you know, you're not living it and you know you're not fulfilling the call of God on your life. Now, the Lord. This is his warning to you. You're not here by accident. This is his warning to you. We have got to fear the Lord. He means what he says. It's not going to be a joke if you continue on this path and bam, it's over for you. What if there's a war all of a sudden? Bam, what if a bomb? drops in your area what if a nuclear bomb and if you don't think they're capable of doing it then you're not watching the news i'm not talking mainstream media i'm talking more uh you know watch the alternative news because they will give you um you know the you the stories you know the actual stories you know there's warships in taiwan u.s warships there's warships in iran there's wars and rumors of wars all over the place Okay, so we're not promised tomorrow, and you want to be found. You want to be found feeding the sheep. And I don't condemn you, Lord knows. There's times when I, I quit. You know, I even had a surgery and got knocked out for a year, and I'm just like, I don't even want to get up and get going again. I'll be honest with you. I don't. But when the Lord Jesus Christ comes to you, I'm ready to go home. <laughs> when the Jesus comes to you, though, and he says to you, feed my sheep and don't stop 
until I tell you to don't stop. Um, we need to heed that. Uh, so whatever door, and, and don't feel like you have to go back like and be a pastor, okay? Man, the wounds that pastors get, sheep bite, okay? I get that. I would not want to be in that arena, but if God told me to, I would. But I'm thankful God's opened this arena. And there are things that we're called to do. Everybody needs to be doing what we're called. Like I said, we're in a, a, an unprecedented time where God needs to call up the reserves. Those of us that are trained and we know spiritual warfare, we know the truth. We understand we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and rulers of darkness. There is a whole generation of millennials coming up, have no clue of the things, the very simple things to us that we know and understand. They don't know that Jesus has a name above every name. They don't know how to be born again. They don't know what it is to walk with God. They don't know how to hear his voice. They don't know why. Because so many of us have been silenced. Don't be that silenced one. There is no condemnation in Christ Jesus. No condemnation for you. God knows I'm one of you. <laughs> okay? I was one that wanted to quit. I was one that for a season, you know, just said, uh, you know, but we can't. We just can't. We just can't. And I don't think our days... Our years are going to be long on the earth. I really don't. We're heading, we're well into the end of the end times. You know, we are well driving close to the second coming of Jesus Christ. Now, I don't think we've entered the seven years, uh, but we are so close. We are so close. But people need to be taught. And you know what? You were called and you were chosen. And you were not a mistake. And it is quite all right if your heart got crushed. Jesus said, you know, whom the rock falls on will be crushed, you know. And if you fall on the rock, you know, either way, <laughs> when you fall on that rock, the word of God does a work in you. We are to be like the potter and the clay. There is a molding. And the more stubborn we are, the harder the molding, okay? The harder the dealings of God are. And, and just look and embrace it. Don't despise what you've been through. Don't despise the places that you've been. Don't despise what you deem as failure, okay? What you deem as failure, God deems as a, that was a training ground. This was a lesson you needed to learn. You may look at this time in your, of your life and think it was a failure. No, preparation, Always, always, always. It's okay. So let it go. And I, I ask you to forgive yourself and look at yourself. You're called. You are chosen. You have been prepared in a way that you don't even understand. And I pray now that the Holy Spirit will open the eyes of your understanding, that you'll understand and see that all the stuff you thought was failure, if you humble your heart before God, it's all been preparation. Amen? Because I want you and I, and particularly those that have been called to feed the sheep and to disciple which actually all of us should be disciples that disciple other people, okay? We really all have a part in this. But he specifically does speak to pastors in this. And it's Matthew 24, verse 45 through 51. We don't want to be those that go back to drinking, that go back to criticizing other ministers, that get bitter um, that are drink and eat, and uh, we don't want to be in that. We want to be those that are blessed. Blessed is that servant whom his master, when he comes, will find so doing. If you're hearing this right now, and you've gone off, and you're you're in, praise the Lord. Just get up and get going again, one way or another. I don't care if it's you know doing a little thing on your Facebook about Jesus Christ, knowledge and truth. Truth protects. These sheep are without a shepherd. There are so many 
that are not getting enough. They may go to church, you know, one day a week and get a half an hour's worth of teaching. My goodness gracious. When I came to Christ, when I really surrendered, I went to church five days a week. Back then we did that. We were so hungry for the word. And during the week, I would listen to teaching tapes in my car. I would read books. I mean, we were just constantly being filled with God's word. And people can criticize that movement because it did error. It got off in error. But part of what was right was our hunger for God's word. And we retained a lot of awesome stuff. Now, you don't throw the baby out with the bathwater, okay? There are things that need to be pruned. The prosperity message was messed up. It was just messed up. There was a lot of pride that got in. There was pride that got in, you know, with those in healing ministries. There was pride. And God doesn't want that in. He wants a purified. Maybe that's why a lot of us went through junk to get refined and things burned out of us to where we're humble. You know, we don't criticize those who are, are sick. We love them. And we praise God when, when people get healed. But if they don't, we keep loving them. I know so many ministers that I encounter, and this is my little soapbox, that when somebody didn't get healed, they would actually persecute them because the sick person made them look bad. Mm, how sick is that? Ugh, how sick is that in the sight of God? Oh, Lord God. I, I just pray, I pray people repent of that yucky, yucky attitude. Um, our hearts need to be humble. Jesus Christ needs to be glorified at all times, at all times. So let me look at our time. Okay, I do have time to go in. Um, I will not go, um, my plan is not to go beyond 30 minutes. We've gone 20. So I want to switch over to talking about the fear of the Lord. And this applies to everyone um, because we don't understand it. We really, I know so many Christians, they think that they're Christians. Maybe they accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior when they were young, but then they've lived a life of an immoral life and they continue to live an immoral life and think that that's okay. Maybe that was modeled to them by one of the fallen fallen pastors or, you know, the people around them that they saw that made mistakes. But our, our measurement is the word of God and Jesus Christ, not other people, not other ministers. Our measure is the word of God, and we really need the word of God. So let me read this to you. Go to Proverbs 1. It says, To know wisdom and instruction to perceive the words of understanding, to receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, judgment, and equity, to give prudence to the simple, to the young man knowledge and discretion. A wise man will hear and increase learning. A man of understanding will attain wise counsel, to understand a proverb and an enigma, the words of the wise and their riddles. And this is the main one. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. See, there's Christians today that think everything's fine and dandy and okay, but they never open their Bible. They never talk to the Lord unless they're in a crisis. They have no clue what the Bible says. And they're not, if you don't know what the Bible says, you're not living in God's ways. You're living like the world if you do not know the words of God. If you're not seeking Him, talking to Him, and living in the Word. Okay, and that concerns me. If you're a baby Christian, that's, you know, of course that's where you're at. God knows where you're at. But if you've been a Christian for a while and you're still not in the Word of God daily, you're missing it. And you will not be strong and prepared and ready for what's coming on the earth. There's some weird stuff going to come down the pike. There is some weird stuff going to come down the pike. And you need to understand, number one, the fear of the Lord and the authority of the name of Jesus. There are things in the Bible that will protect you. If you get encountered with things you don't know what to do about, you're going to need to know what God can do for you according to the scriptures and what he will do and promises to do for you. 
You've got to, un you need to understand these things. Okay. And, and none of us get a pass. You know, we don't get a pass. If, if you have time in your life and, and if you don't, you need to cut something out and make time. Okay. I mean, I know people that say I don't have time, but they'll watch, you know, they'll spend four or five, six hours on their phone or on the television and then say they don't have time for Jesus Christ. Well, what is that? Well, that makes it an idol. If you're doing that and you're saying you don't have time for Jesus Christ, it makes it an idol. Now, I'm not saying TV's wrong or the internet's wrong. I love them both. But you, when you need to get up in the morning and spend your first time with God, you need to carve out that place where God has priority over the other stuff. Okay? And I'm not talking about quantity of time. I'm talking about quality where you really encounter God, talk to him, and get in his word. So we want to go on to uh, Proverbs 1.8. My son, hear the instruction of your father. Do not forsake the law of your mother, for they will be a graceful ornament on your head and chains about your neck. My son, if sinners entice you, do not consent. If they say, come with us, let us lie in wait to shed blood, let us lurk secretly for the innocent without a cause. There's so much of that going on, so much peer pressure, so many people getting drawn into the wrong things. And see, the Bible, it is like a mother and father to us. It gives us instructions. Oh, my goodness. There's another one in here that I read. It said, do not become friends with an angry man, lest he corrupt you. I mean, who gets taught that? Unless you read it for yourself. The, the little sermons you're getting on 30 minutes on a Sunday morning is not enough to sustain you and keep you and fill you with knowledge, okay? It needs to be much more than that. And God loves us. He wants us to have this good stuff, okay? It says, um, wisdom calls outside. She raises her voice in the open squares. She cries out in the chief concourses in the openings of the gate of the city. She speaks her words. How long, you simple ones, will you love simplicity? It's not okay to just stay ignorant, okay, and, and be complacent. For scorners delight in their scorning, and fools hate knowledge. Fools hate knowledge. Turn at my rebuke. Surely I will pour out my spirit on you. I will make my words known to you. That's a promise there. You say, I don't understand the Bible. He promises he will make his words known to you. You claim that promise, you pray, and you continue to read. I guarantee you he will open the eyes of your understanding. Okay? And maybe he's waiting to see if you're going to be faithful to do it. You show him you're serious about wanting to understand who he is, who this God that you claim to know, this God that you claim to follow, this God whose name you claim, calling yourself a Christian, he wants to know how serious are you about him. Are you going to get in here and seek understanding? Because if you don't, I think he would question your sincerity about wanting him to be your Lord. Just think about it. You guys, he's real. He has feelings. When we blow him off, he feels it. He hurts. He feels it and he hurts. And you say, well, why does he care about me? Look, this God we serve has the capacity to have an intimate relationship with each and every one of us. That's how great he is. How does he do that? He dwells outside of time. Okay? It's a whole different realm than what you and I can understand. But I know it's true. I know he can deal with me intimately and personally. At the same time, he's dealing with you and billions of other people. He's able. That's who we serve. That's who our God is. And see, we need to know and understand that, all right? So he's calling us to seek out wisdom. She speaks her words. Oh, long, how long, simple ones, will you love simplicity? Turn at my rebuke. Surely I will pour out my spirit on you. There's another promise. There's two promises right there. And that's Proverbs 1, um, 21. And you can continue reading there. He promises to give you understanding. He promises he'll pour out his spirit on you and he'll make his words known to you. Because I've called you and you refused, 
this is where we don't want to go, but, but we need to hear these warnings. I've stretched out my hand and no one regarded because you disdained all my counsel and would have none of my rebuke. I also will laugh at your calamity. Uh, will God laugh at our calamity? It says wisdom will. I will mock when your terror comes, when your terror comes like a storm and your destruction comes like a whirlwind. When distress and anguish come upon you, they will call on me, but I will not answer. There's a day, we're not in that yet, but there's a day when, when God ceases to do that. I mean, if you get up to that day where it's your day of death, after that, it's too late. It's too late. And nobody knows the day of their death or the hour of it. And there's no power over it. It says, then they'll call on me, I'll not answer. They'll seek me diligently, they'll not find me, because they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. They would have none of my counsel and despise my every rebuke. Therefore, they shall eat the fruit of their own way and be filled to the full with their own fancies. Now, that's an interesting one, because I know something the Lord told on my heart that all these people that seek movies and seek fantasy, they seek to live virtual reality, they seek to go in and, and live the Call of Duty war and shoot bloody things and get away with it. If that's their fancy, they'll, they'll be given that. But it won't be a fantasy anymore. It will be dealt out to them. Oh, Lord have mercy. God is so serious about what he says. All right? And be filled to the full with their own fancies. For the turning away of the simple will slay them, and the complacency of fools will destroy them. But whoever listens to me will dwell safely. Woo! But whoever listens to me will dwell safely and will be secure without fear of evil. And that's where I want to be, and that's where I want you to be. I want you to put yourself in the place where you are listening to God you're seeking his wisdom. Therefore, you are given this incredible promise. You will dwell safely. You will dwell safely. And you will be without fear of evil. Does that mean evil won't come and surround us? God knows. I mean, most people do believe we'll be in World War III and then America will be invaded on our own soil. That's pretty scary. But don't you, if anything like that happens, don't you want to be without fear how can you be without fear? How can that happen? We can be without fear because we know in whom we believe. And we know his promises. And we know that this life is not all. We are going to come to the end of the age. We all are going to die. Okay? If you make it to the end of the seven years and, and get raptured, you know, there's like a few that make it there. But the majority of us will die. Our lives will end. But we don't have to fear death. We can be free from the fear of death because Jesus Christ has promised those who believe and are born again, who call on his name, those are going to go to heaven with him. We're forgiven by the blood of Jesus Christ. Okay? Now, you can choose to walk in the wisdom that will bring you to that place where there's no fear of death. Okay? It doesn't mean that you may not feel fear, um, but there, down in your spirit, there will be a peace that passes all understanding. And you know you will pass from this body. It, death is not really that scary. I've actually had a near-death out-of-body experience. You just leave your body. Your spirit and your soul leaves your body. And you go, if you're born again, you go to heaven. You go into the presence of God. There's a scripture that says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Now, you need to know that truth, okay? These There's so many truths that you need to know so you can have that peace. God wants you to have that peace. He wants you to dwell without fear of death. That's such a hard thing for so many. So right now, if you've never received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you want to get started on this journey, or you want to just repent because you haven't been walking it, I just ask that you would pray this prayer with me, okay? Just say it after me. Dear Lord Jesus, I, I choose to believe in you. 
and I ask you to forgive my sins. I ask you to forgive me for ignoring you, for pretending like you aren't there. I ask you to forgive me for not trusting in you. Cleanse me. I ask you to be my Lord and my Savior. And that right now, write my name in the book of life that I will eternally and forever belong to you. Now help me to get in your word and to understand your word and to spend time in prayer, which is talking to you. Help me not get religious about it. Help me get honest of heart with you. Help me give my pain to you, God. Help me to follow you and to fulfill my call and my purpose. In Christ Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, God bless you. Thank you for your time. And I will be in prayer. There are some of you God wants to come off the bench, and I'm excited for you. And there are some of you God is so ready to disciple you because he has a destiny and he has a purpose for you. And you were created and born right here at this time, this intense time, because he's put inside of you everything you need. Okay? And as you get in the word, those things are going to come alive. The word of God is going to ignite you. And your understanding is going to guide you. And the Holy Spirit will guide you into all truth. And I encourage you, real quick, if you're not filled with the baptism in the Holy Spirit, okay, go to uh, my teaching number 14, how to receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit. It'll just help you a lot. You don't have to have it to be saved. It'll just help you a lot. That's all. All right. God bless you. I thank you for your time. I'm going to let you go now. And go get quiet, pick up your Bible, and have an honest heart-to-heart -heart with God. I mean, sometimes it's the quietest prayer that just comes from an honest heart that seems to move his hand mightily. It's not how loud I pray or how intense I pray. Sometimes it's just like, oh God, this hurts me so bad. I don't know how to get this pain out of my heart. I don't know how to deal with this situation. Father, I need your help in Jesus' name. Help me. Sometimes it's that simple. And you see the hand of God move like no tomorrow. Give it a try. All right? Step in. He loves you. You're made on purpose. You're made at this time on purpose for such a time as this. Don't walk away. Don't walk away. What he has for you is good. All right. God bless you and I'll see you next time.